and a bipartisan pair of senators uh, wants to ban U.S. lawmakers, senior executive branch officials, and their families from owning uh, and trading stocks. Uh, the bill from New York Democrat Kirsten Gillibrand and Missouri Republican Josh Hawley would not allow exceptions even for blind trusts. Members of Congress and senior White House officials uh, would be hit with fines if they break the rules, and the law would also beef up 2012's Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act. Joining us now, Senators uh, Gillibrand uh, and Hawley, and welcome uh, to you both, and it's nice to see you uh, together. I'll start with you, Senator uh, Gillibrand. The, the argument is that we don't want total business neophytes in positions of power. That's, that's the devil's advocate, that there's actually some benefit to having people that know how to uh, maneuver around the stock market. Um, I, guess, I guess you don't think that matters in this case. No, no. What we're trying to do is that right now we have a law that requires transparency. Uh, it was called the Stock Act. And if you buy and sell um, stocks and trade, you have to disclose what you're doing. Because the risk is that a lot of members have access to a great deal of non-public information. And the facts show that members of Congress have a 17% higher rate of return than the S&P 500 in their stock trading. So that would lend you to think maybe they're super, super smart or they have access to non-public information. And about one out of seven members of Congress did not disclose their trades properly in the last Congress. So we have a problem here. And since Congress is not abiding by the rules that we put in place a decade ago, I believe, and I think uh, Josh shares this view, that they should be banned from buying and selling stock because they have so much non-public information. I don't know, Senator Hawley. They could be really, really smart, couldn't they? Uh, you, you've seen some of the testimony <laughs> we see and the questions that uh, either that, that the House or Senate participants, uh, yeah, maybe that's not what it is. Um, th there might be something to this. No, listen, this, this is very simple. There is no reason why members of Congress should be up here spending their time day trading, trying to make a buck on the stock market when they're supposed to be here to do the people's business. And if you ask people, do they think that members of Congress ought to be able to trade individual stock, they say overwhelmingly no. And most are shocked to learn that it's legal. Most people think that already it is illegal now and should be. So listen, this should be an easy call. It's a common sense bill, and I hope it'll get a vote soon. What about the, the whole idea of, of the blind trust? What, what's the problem there, Senator Gillibrand? How, how, do they, how, does that, uh, how do they get around it with a blind trust? Seems like if you had someone managing all your money, you think that they, I don't know, there's some backroom talks going on with, uh, with the people in control of the blind trust? Uh, I think that's the view, that people don't really believe that these blind trusts would limit members of Congress telling their... Uh, financial advisor information that they have uh, that the public does not have. And so it's just cleaner to say uh, you can't buy and sell uh, stocks. The only thing you can have is 401ks. How do you uh, approach spouses and other family members in this regard? So it's for spouses and, and um, dependent children. So you can't just sit, tell your spouse, hey honey, why don't you go buy and sell this one? or do it in your four-year-old's name. What if your spouse already works in the industry? They have to quit their job? Go ahead, Josh. No, so spouses who work in the industry and who are advising other people are permitted to advise others, but what they cannot do is buy and sell and trade their own stock. So the member can't do it, the member's spouse can't do it, the member's children can't do it, and this is just about an, having an across-the-board rule with no loopholes. It's the same reason why we ban blind trusts is that when you start creating these loopholes, it gets way too easy to exploit. And listen, we're all familiar with the news reports of members of Congress whose spouses have traded millions and millions worth of dollars on stock trades that have direct relevance to the legislation the members voting on. Yeah. That shouldn't wonder, happen, and this you, bill closes you that loophole. Support, did you lose support with, voter, with votes in the Senate and or the House when you include the spouses? Does your support go from one level that oh, passes it to one so. that doesn't? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, Kirsten could speak to, to her side of the aisle. Listen, here's, here's the real truth, is that there are so many people who would rather keep the rules the way they are. As Kirsten pointed out, mo many members of Congress don't even attempt to comply with the rules. Now, this is why we've got to bring this issue into the public light. We've got to vote on it, and we've got to get people on the record. We've been trying to do it. it, 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 it here's, oh, go ahead, Senator. Here's uh -huh. an example of... 
Here's an example of volume. In the last Congress, there were 3,700 trades that could have violated um, the prohibitions of trading on non-public information. 3,700. So if we had a more active DOJ to investigate insider trading and hold people accountable by actually doing these investigations, then our transparency law would have worked. But we're not seeing that. We're seeing one in seven um, not disclosing 3,700 trades that could have violated different requirements. It's not working, so we need to actually ban it. We tried the light touch, it didn't work. It's, uh, we've been trying to do this for a while. It's very strange to see, I think Speaker Pelosi, it seemed like it was gonna happen, and then, uh, I don't know, she sort of did not want it to happen. It, if you just look at, at face value, it really looks like she thought that maybe her family wouldn't do as well in the stock market. Is that, isn't, it, isn't there something beyond that? That just seems like too, uh, too easy to explain it, Senator Hawley, doesn't it? Is that really what it was all about? <clears throat> well, listen, I think what you've seen is reports of members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. This is a bipartisan thing where you have members of Congress who like to trade stock and they make quite a bit of money on it. So listen, let's be honest. There's a lot of resistance to this among members who want to be able to trade stock, so who want to be able yeah. to use the information. Yeah, they want to be able to use the information that members get. And the fact of the matter is that's unfair, it's a distraction, and it's a potential conflict of interest. Yeah. So this is why we need an across the board rule. And by the way, our bill applies to the executive branch also. Mm -hmm. This is a rule for Congress, it's a rule for the executive branch, it is a consistent rule, and we should pass it now. Yeah, and the bottom line is no one should be coming to Congress to make money off the non-public information that they're getting. That is not what we are here for. We're here to serve the public. We're here to help people. We're here to make a difference. We are not here to get rich. And so this makes sense. 80% of the American public support this. Uh, it's a no-brainer, as they say. And I think it's important that we come together, advocate for this. We made the first reform 10 years ago with the requirement of disclosure. It's not enough. We've given it 10 years to see if it works. Now it's time to ban stock trades. Senator Gillibrand, if this doesn't go this time, are we supposed to, to then just assume at, at what Senator Hawley just described, that people like to use non-public information to make money? Should we assume that's why it's not going to pass if it doesn't? And, and do you think it is going to? I mean, we tried before. It hasn't happened. No, I'm optimistic, actually. I think Josh and I are a pretty good team. And I think he can get a lot of Republicans on his side. I can get a lot of Democrats on my side. And together, I think we can get the kind of support that we have to show leadership in both the House and Senate that we could pass the bill. I mean, Senator Hall, you just said it, it hasn't passed in the past because people like using non-public information to make money in their stock accounts. I mean, that is a, that's a pretty serious uh, charge and indictment of, of the people we've got in the House and the Senate. Well, no, listen, I, I don't think it's an indictment necessarily of their moral character. I just think they like the current system. And what we have to do is make the case <laughs> that the current too. system isn't good for the American people. Yeah, well, exactly. That's why we need to change it. You know, so it's not good for the American people. It's not good for conflict of interest. We need to change it. And listen, I think it's hard to explain to the public why you're against this, which is why I'm confident in the end this will pass, because the, the public supports it, the public wants it, and it's the right thing to do. Okay. For the, for the credibility of the markets and for the credibility of, of, right. of, of government, actually. It it's, this is what we've been talking about for many, many years. Right. And, uh, you know, as strange bedfellows as it may be, right. them together on this is a great thing. And we're not talking about the difference in height. We're talking about, uh, <laughs> we were looking at that and it's, we were wondering how, Senator Hall, you're pretty tall. Josh uh, is tall and I am petite. <laughs> petite. That's right. You know what they do here, Senator? They put us all in chairs so we all look the same way. Otherwise, if it was me standing next to these guys, it'd be the same story. That's right. But thank you both. And um, we'll see what thank happens. You. We have good, good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck.